if we have an instrument that changes resistance, and we've talked about a few of those now, we need to measure that resistance change in some way. Now, resistance is kind of a, it's basically a physical property, isn't it? But we can't look at something and tell what the resistance is. We've got to somehow run electrons through it to figure out what its uh, resistance is. But voltage, we can work with. Voltage, we can send down a wire and send it to an analog to digital converter that looks at a voltage signal, and it'll make a record of it for us. Or we can take that voltage and manipulate it and amplify it and compare it and uh, act on it. So we like voltages um, for our signals. So if we want to turn a resistance change into a voltage signal instead, then we need some way to sort of do a little bit of a transduction between those two. And we do that with Mr. Wheatstone's bridge. At its heart, this is, uh, we will supply it a known voltage here, so let's call this 10 volts, just for the sake of having a round number. And we're going to measure the difference between this junction and that junction. What a Wheatstone bridge is, is a pair of voltage dividers. Now, we could have talked about voltage dividers yesterday in electrical. It would have been fair. But let's talk about them here. If I have 10 volts, so 10 volts there and 0 volts there, if you like, if I run that through two identical resistors and I measure the voltage between this node and that node, what is my measurement going to be between those two green dots? If those two resistors are identical, yeah. And it doesn't matter if the top one is a million ohms and the bottom one's a million ohms, as long as they're the same, I'm going to get a 5 volt difference between those two. If I increase the resistance of this bottom one, is my 5 volts going to go up or is it going to go down? I increase the resistance of it. If I increase the resistance all the way such that this were effectively not even conducting electricity, then the voltage here would be 10. Right? So if I just cut it, it would have infinite resistance and my voltage there would be 10. So as my resistance goes up, my voltage number goes up. Well, what about the other resistor? If I change the resistance of the top one, so is this one, as this resistance goes up, then the voltage drop across it goes up. If I change the top one, uh, as this resistance goes up, the voltage across the bottom one goes down because the voltage drop across the top one goes up. So anytime you raise the resistance, then the voltage drop across that resistor is higher.